Dolphins fans, what a win yesterday over the New England Patriots. And let me tell you something. Number one, we beat the Pats, which is fantastic. Number two, Dolphins today is almost at 29K. Go down, subscribe, help me get to 29,000 subscribers before the end of the day. Dolphins fans, I'm going to give you all two of those today just because I'm in a great mood because the Dolphins beat the Patriots 20-7 to yesterday. And honestly, the score doesn't really tell you the full story. It was a blowout. The Dolphins dominated Bill Belichick. Tua beat Bill Belichick again. He's 4-0 against him now. I'm fired up. I'm also fired up because I'm finally on Instagram. A lot of y'all been in the comments saying, Willie, got to go on Instagram. Well, I finally created a Willie Finn's Instagram Go down and follow me, at Willie Fins. I might post a meme about the Patriots by Mac Jones by the end of the day. I'm in a great mood. It's Victory Monday. Nothing better than that. Be sure to go follow me on IG, at Willie Fins. It's not only Victory Monday. It's also Overreaction Monday. We're going to be doing these all season long. So I'm going to break down some storylines emerging from yesterday's win, tell you if I think it's an overreaction or if it's accurate. And we begin with this, which is probably why a lot of y'all clicked on this video. Could the Dolphins trade Teddy Bridgewater to the Dallas Cowboys? Of course, Dak Prescott suffered uh, the hand injury yesterday. He had surgery today. He's going to miss up to six to eight weeks. So could a Teddy trade to Dallas be possible? I think this is an overreaction. And I'm going to explain why in a second, but I'm sure a lot of Dolphins fans are very intrigued by this idea because this would mean Skylar Thompson becoming QB2. And Teddy's one of the better backup quarterbacks in the league. He could generate some interest in a possible trade. And I even said, I think last week, that I think when a starting quarterback goes down, that the Dolphins might receive a call or two about Teddy. Here's what Adam Schefter reported early this morning. A timeline from overnight. Cowboys QB Dak Prescott is scheduled to have surgery on his right thumb today and is expected to miss six to eight weeks. Multiple sources told ESPN's Todd Archer. Chris Greer, is he on the phone trying to get this done? Is he calling Jerry Jones and being like, yo, I can get you Teddy Bridgewater to Dallas, to Love Field by the end of the day today. Come on, Chris Greer, make it happen because I would love to see Skylar Thompson as QB too. So Teddy Bridgewater by multiple media outlets in terms of, you know, those, you know, those Dak Prescott replacement videos and articles you see. But he's certainly been linked to Dallas after the Prescott injury. It's actually listed by CBS Sports as the number two backup QB in the NFL behind Jimmy Garoppolo. He was a starter last year. That's probably why. Here's what he did in Denver. 18 touchdowns, seven interceptions, over 3,000 yards, a 66.9% completion percentage. So he's not bad. Uh, he's not, you know, a starter in the NFL anymore. I think two is far better, but, uh, you know, Teddy's certainly an option here for Dallas. However, I think this is an overreaction because there's better options for Dallas on the table than Teddy Bridgewater. Here are some of those options. Their number one option is to trade for Jimmy Garoppolo. I think Gardner Minshew probably the second best backup quarterback in the league behind him. But a division rival trading Gardner Minshew to the Cowboys, I don't really think that's realistic. Cam Newton might be the best free agent quarterback still out there and available. Case Keenum, in my opinion, might be the third best backup QB in the NFL behind Garoppolo and Minshew. And then Teddy Bridgewater, definitely one of the better backup QBs in the NFL, although he did not look good in the preseason. Skylar Thompson outplayed him then. He also outplayed played him in training camp. Do you want to trade Teddy Bridgewater to the Dallas Cowboys? Type Y for yes or type N for no. Down in the comment section, go down, chime in. It is the pinned comment on today's video. So when ad break comes, let me know Y for yes or N for no. A lot of y'all are going to be saying Y for yes because of this situation. Skylar Thompson would immediately become QB2 if a Teddy Bridgewater to Dallas trade happens. And I think the Dolphins would feel comfortable trading away Teddy at this point because they've seen what Sky can do. They know he's capable of being a good backup quarterback in this league, maybe even eventually a good starting quarterback. So, yeah, I, I'm really excited about Sky. I think he's uh, you know maybe a better option for QB2 even in front of Bridgewater. And a lot of people outside of Miami are going to be like, whoa, and that's insane. You know, Teddy's proven Skyler's not. All I'm saying is Skyler looked a lot better than Teddy in the preseason. That's just a fact. 
Let's talk about this next one. Tua was great. Tua wasn't great. Um, I'm going to say this is accurate. And I'm not saying Tua wasn't good. I even said on the post-game show yesterday, I thought Tua was good. But Tua can be a lot better than he was yesterday. He was good, but he wasn't great. That would be my take from yesterday's game. Definitely did a lot of things well. Made a couple mistakes. He kind of got bailed out by a dropped interception or two. There was a couple plays where he was uh, being sacked and threw the ball last minute. I mean, he, he can't be doing that. He's got to just be better in terms of decision making but overall the stat line was really good I mean 270 yards one touchdown no interceptions however I don't believe he completed a ball deeper than 25 yards down the field air yards at least he made a few questionable decisions but overall last night or I should say yesterday he was really solid he got the job done the offense was efficient under his leadership so he was solid but he can be a lot better than he was last night but I do want to give him props because look at this List of QBs to start their career, 4-0 against Bill Belichick. John Elway, Tua Tungavailoa. Put some respect on his name, says CBS Sports HQ. Travis Wingfield had this. Dolphins QB Tua Tungavailoa this weekend posted the 8th best passer rating, 6th best yards per attempt, 8th best completion percentage over expected, 5th best adjusted yards per pass attempt, 7th best net yards per attempt, 1 of 9 QBs without a turnover. Media's not going to talk about that, though. Let's be honest, because the media hates Tua. There's a narrative against Tua. But Tua's a good quarterback. I think he can be great. Right now he's good. We want him to be great. He's better than I think he played yesterday. He can be better, at least. If you want to go bet on the fins, you can do that at promo code DOLPHINS125. Patrick Seatman, turn your mic on for a second. Because I think we both got a little bit rich in, in yesterday's Dolphins game, did we not? Oh, we did. Over <laughs> Tua, over Tyreek, Dolphins minus three. Oh, that's great. It was, great. It was outstanding. You know what? You can get rich on the fins because the, the, the odds makers are going to keep disrespecting the Dolphins, right? Chatsports.com slash bet. Promo code DOLPHINS125 for a 125% deposit bonus. And look at this. The odds makers are disrespecting the Dolphins once again. The Ravens are the three-and-a-half-point favorite heading into this weekend's game. The total at 43-and-a-half. Go bet on the fans. I'm going to be betting on the fans. Tail Willie Fins. Willie Fins went 3-1 and one yesterday in my bets. Promo code DOLPHINS125. If you put $100 in, you can get $125 free cash to bet with. Great deal. Go and take advantage. Chatsports.com slash bet. Let's talk about the run game because this was a point of emphasis throughout the entire preseason. Is it a problem? No, not right now. This is an overreaction. Um, if I see the same thing against Baltimore, I might be coming back next week on Overreaction Monday and saying this is accurate. But it's one weekend. This is an overreaction. However, the running backs were not outstanding yesterday. Edmonds, 12 carries, 25 yards. Mostert, 5 carries, 16 yards. Didn't see Gaskin. I was a little bit disappointed about that. I want to see Miles. And then Salvin Ahmed was inactive. So Edmonds and Mostert combined for just 41 yards, uh, which is obviously not ideal. But the run game's going to improve, right? The run game's going to get better. Uh, in the preseason finale against the Eagles, I think we saw what this run game can do. It's going to continue to get better throughout the year. I was actually surprised when I saw Edmonds' stat line after the game because I think producer Patrick Seatman will agree. It felt like Edmonds had a good impact yesterday. You know, obviously had that great catch for a first down where he spun past the New England Patriot defender to pick up a really big first down, maybe the biggest first down of the game late in the fourth quarter. The run game is going to get better. I think we all saw Edmonds, what he can do yesterday. Though. Are you worried about the run game? Uh, let me know down in the comments section. Go down. Let me know if you're worried about the run game. Right now, I'm not. Ask me in a week or two, though, and I'll tell you how I feel then. Oh, boy. Here we come. I was getting a lot of Twitter mentions this morning after the PFF grades were released. Is Connor Williams a good center? This is an overreaction right now. Uh, I understand that the PFF grades were very good for Connor Williams. Let's take a look here. Oh, goodness. Overall was an 82.3. Run blocking grade, 86.8. Pass blocking, 65.4. So overall, a decent debut for Williams. However, the snaps were an issue. So I counted four bad snaps yesterday. Tom Downey, our NFL Daily host here, went back and watched the game. He said four bad snaps as well. The first snap of the game was egregious. I mean, Tua had to jump up. The ball almost went over his head. My prophecy almost came true when I said that the first snap of the season was going to be over Tua's head. It was very, very close. Tua had to leap in the air to get it. 
There was another snap. It was third and two in the third quarter. It ended up it ended up being a late handoff to Raheem Mostert because two had to go way up and get it. It was a late handoff, and then they blew us up at the line. It was fourth and one. So, look, when the time comes when Connor proves that he's a capable center, if and when, I'll admit that I was wrong. I said Skylar Thompson was a terrible draft pick. I was wrong about that. I literally created a, a poster that says I was wrong about Skylar Thompson. I'll do the exact same about Connor Williams if he proves to be a good center. Look, the blocking was really good from Connor yesterday, which is not a surprise. He was one of the best guards in the NFL last year. Of course he can block. The question is, can he snap? Yes, there were, the snaps were not egregious yesterday outside of maybe those two. But he's got to be better snapping the football. I want a clean sheet from Connor Williams because that's what an NFL center is supposed to do. I was watching a high school football game the other night. I didn't see one bad snap from either of the two centers. I saw four from Connor Williams yesterday. You're an NFL center. No bad snaps. That's how it should be. If and when that time comes, I'll admit that I was wrong about Connor Williams. Patrick Seatman is dying over there in the producer chair. Now, could the Dolphins trade Mike Isicki? Uh, yes, this is something that could happen. Mike did not get involved yesterday. No receptions. Uh, just one target for Gesicki yesterday against the Patriots. I was a little bit disappointed. I want to see him get more involved, but a lot of people don't think he fits in this offense. So we'll see what goes down. I definitely think a Gesicki trade is possible. And we're going to get some tweets here in a second. People talking about a potential Mike Gesicki trade. He's been in some trade rumors. There was a report like, the last week of camp that the Dolphins were shopping him. This is what uh, Ben Volan said. Keep in mind, he works for the Boston Globe, covers the Patriots. So, like, let's just take this with a grain of salt, that being said. The Dolphins are paying Mike Kosicki nearly $11 million on the tag, but use him for just 25 snaps yesterday. Had one target, one catch for one yard. So he did have one catch, excuse me. Seems like Dolphins GM Chris Greer is screaming for someone to come trade for him. This is what my guy Hollywood Kev said, one of my favorite followers on Twitter. Unpopular opinion, trade Mike Kosicki while he still has value. Yesterday showed us he has no value in this offense. He had one target, one, and he still can't block. Kev's not wrong. Kev's got a point. I want to see Kosicki get more involved in this offense. And I like the offense. I really do. But I want to, get, I want to see Kosicki get more targets, more touches than he did yesterday. I was a little bit disappointed, but... The, if he gets more involved, and if he still isn't a fit, then trade him. Until then, I would not trade Mike Kosicki, even though he's going to be a free agent next year. So about Cater Kohu. I'm really excited about Cater Kohu. And a lot of y'all remember after he was signed as UDFA, I said he has a legit shot to make this team. He did. And not only has he made the team, he had an exceptional NFL debut. Is he legit, though? Yes, he is legit. He is already far better than no Igbenogany. That is not an exaggeration. Igbo, former first-round pick out of the SEC. Cater Kohu, a UDFA this year out of Division II Texas A&M Commerce, is already better than Igbenogany. Take a look at what he did yesterday. Three tackles, a big pass breakup. That was a third down play, one of the biggest plays of the game. He got it. One forced fumble that was recovered by JP. And get this, in his NFL debut, you, you listening, Producer Seeps? He had the highest PFF grade of any Dolphin in his NFL debut. A 91.2 PFF grade. Exceptional stuff from Cater Kohu. And let me tell you something. He better stay involved when Byron Jones comes back. Because the reason he got a lot of snaps yesterday was number one, because Jones was out, number two, because Igbo was out. He better stay involved when Jones comes back. This guy has legit number three corner type of stuff. I want to see Cater Kohu continue to stay involved even in week four, week five, when Jones comes back. Reminder, I'm on Instagram. Go follow me on IG, at Willie Fins. I'm going to be posting about the Dolphins all season long. Willie Fins, follow me on the IG.